So in this video, we are going to look at how we create the standard sales order using the order type ORR and the third party process. We're going to see how we create a requisition and then from there we'll create a purchase order. We'll also have a look at how we get feedback from the vendor on the delivery dates and how that delivery date then comes back into the sales order. Next, we'll look at processing or posting the vendor's invoice using the transaction called MIRO or MIRO. And there we're going to purposely post a slightly lower value than what was on the purchase order. We then will create an invoice for the customer and we'll have a look at how since there was a reduction in what the vendor invoiced us, we'll see how that comes through in our invoice to the customer. So we will see differences between what was originally ordered in the sales order, what was invoiced from the vendor and what we will be billing the customer. And as I said before, the last part is we're going to update the delivery uh, date in the purchase order and see how that flows back into the sales order. So now let's go into SAP and create an OR sales order. I'm going to put the standard sales uh, sold to party and for the requested date, I'm going to put the 16th of May, which is actually today. And what we're going to do is when we put that date, we're going to see how that date goes forwards and backwards or changes as we change the purchase order. So I'm now going to put the standard plant in here. And let's put our third party material and a quantity of five and press enter. And let's see what happens next. Now, the system should then looking uh, look at the dates right and then says oops I can't deliver it on the 16th uh, based on the availability date so forth I'm going to deliver it on the 30th so if we open up the calendar you can see that the difference between the 16th and 30th is 10 working days which is our planned delivery time on the material master so let's approve that and as you can see the item category here is what we saw before in our configuration which is TAS or TAS. And as we saw in our previous video, the item category TAS is the standard SAP item category for third party. And this also means that with this, the schedule line would be CS as we saw in our configuration also in the last video. You can see here we have two schedule line. The first schedule line is for the 16th, which is what the customer has ordered. But obviously, since we can fulfill that, the, the, the confirmed quantity is zero. Then the next schedule line is for the 30th. And on that, we have said that we can deliver the five that the customer has ordered. Now let's go to the second schedule line and go into the procurement tab. And you can see here we have the purchase requisition field it's blank and that's normal because what SAP is still saying is that this is a temporary document you haven't saved it SAP hasn't committed this document to the database and you could cancel it so it doesn't want to create a requisition at the moment what it wants to do is it'll wait until you have saved the sales order and in the background, as a process of saving the sales order, it will then create the requisition in the background and assign it to the schedule line. Just to close it off, let's look at the INCO terms um, in the, oops, it's the billing tab here. Uh, you can see the INCO terms is here, DDU, um, customer 12345. So now let's go ahead and let's save the sales order and we'll get our sales order number after this. So. SAP now has saved it. We have our sales order number. And now let's go back into the sales order in display mode and see the requisition number that I told you about. So we go to the schedule line here. We go to this schedule line, CS. And if I go to the procurement tab, you can now see that SAP has created the requisition in the background 
and put it against the schedule line. Now let's create the purchase order using the standard ME21N transaction and first I'm going to create or I'm going to select the requisition that we created from the sales order and I'm going to drag and drop this requisition into the sales or into the cart and this means that the purchase order will be created with reference to the requisition and it will copy all of the values from the requisition into the purchase order. Now you can see the vendor which has been determined from the requisition which the requisition determined from the source list and info record is now copied into the purchase order. If I were to go to the vendor address on the purchase order header you would see that it's so far it's just the standard address of the vendor so so far the purchase order seems normal but when we look at the if we go to the delivery address on the item line you will notice that this material actually has to be delivered to the sole the ship to party address of the customer from the sales order and this makes this purchase order a third party i.e we deliver the material directly to the customer's ship to address and this is what happens when we create the when we create a sales order with the item category of tasks the system copies the ship to address into the purchase requisition into the purchase order and this makes it a third party purchase order another indicator that this is a third party order is the account assignment is set to third party and the item category of this purchase order is also set to S which is third party and remember these two values come from the requisition and that the, when the requisition was created these values came from the configuration of the schedule line so this is how we mark that this purchase order is a third party via the configuration of the schedule line in the sales order. Moving on, let's look at the delivery date on the purchase order. You can see here that for this material the delivery date is actually on the 16th and if we look at the delivery schedule you can see again the delivery date is set to the 16th. If we look at the warning message it says that nope, realistically looking at the lead time it should be the 27th. It's just a warning at the moment so now the delivery date is still set to the 16th. This is what we have told the vendor to deliver. If we look now at the INCO terms, you can see it's DDU. Um, and this comes from the info record as we talked before. So this purchase order is now nice and complete. We can go ahead and let's save it. And we'll have our purchase order number. Let me just open this message and then I'll copy the purchase order number into the clipboard because we're going to go back into it again. So what I want to do now is I want to change the delivery date on the purchase order and see that change be flowed through onto the sales order. So let's go ahead, let's change the purchase order via the transaction ME22N and here, this delivery date here, let's, uh, let's say the vendor has said, nope, I can't do that, I can only do it let's say on the first right so I update the purchase order and I save it so the purchase order has been saved and now let's go back into the original sales order that created this purchase order and if we press enter and if we now go to the schedule line you notice that the second schedule line says the first Remember before it was the 30th, now it has been changed to the 1st as it now matches the date, uh, the delivery date on the purchase order. So as you can see, an update to the purchase order also updates the sales order.